Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemag TV. In today's tutorial for Lightroom we're going to be going through and creating this Lomo inspired effect. Now as you can see on the image in front of us it's quite a distinct effect. We've got a nice vignette, there's a little bit of grain, some high contrast to it and some really vibrant punchy kind of cross process colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how we can create this type of effect, how you can go through and adjust this to get it to exactly how you want it, and we'll also have a free preset available to download on the website. So let's take a look at how we do all of that right now. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to create this Lomo style effect. As you can see, the image we now have, which is the starting point, is already quite a cool looking image, but by applying this effect, we can make it a little bit more interesting. So to start off with, as we always do, we're going to work through the panel and we're going to start off with the basics tab. So let's open that up and we're going to go through and we're going to make some slight alterations. Now, it's entirely up to you how you want to style your image to start off with because the cross processing is or the split toning. That's where we're really going to get creative. But these are some general guidelines that I like to start off with. I'll tend to take the exposure just up a little bit, probably about a quarter of a stop to half a stop, just to give it a little bit of extra brightness into the actual image itself. But then I'm going to reduce the contrast because I want to flatten this down ever so slightly. So I'm going to take this down to about minus 20, 25, somewhere around there. That's going to start to flatten the image out. And then we're going to go through the highlights and shadows and the whites and blacks to do the same kind of thing. So I'm going to reduce the highlights ever so slightly. And we're going to do the same with the shadows, but we're going to increase those instead of reduce them. So we'll punch those up a little bit to open the shadows up. So like you say, what we're effectively doing is flattening the image, reducing that contrast slightly. So with the whites, we're going to reduce that the same as we did with the highlights. We're going to go down by about minus 10 or so. And with the blacks, we're just going to pump those up just ever so slightly, probably by about plus 10. So you can see we already end up with a much smoother looking image. So now we're going to come down to the clarity and we're going to start to bump that up a little bit. Now I'd recommend don't go above 60 on this. That's just a guideline, not a rule, because then you start to tend to start of go into the HDR type effect. So let's take that up. I'm going to take that to about 50, 45 to 50. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the vibrance and the saturation so we can flatten the image, the color in the image down slightly, because we want to use the split toning to actually give the image its primary color. So I'm going to set both of these to minus 10. And there we go. So we now ended up with a fairly flat, desaturated image. So let's just take a look at a before and after so we can compare the two. And as you can see, we desaturated quite nicely. We flattened the image down. So let's move on now to the tone curve. So let's just open that up. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that from linear and we're going to choose medium contrast. And as you can see, that just sort of dips the blacks down a little bit, gives us a bit more contrast back in the image. You could, if you wanted to push it to strong contrast, entirely up to you and the image you're working on. So once we've done that, I'm going to come down to the split toning, and this is where we're going to start to add the colors, the Lomo colors into it. Now, this is entirely up to you what kind of color range you want to do, but you realistically want to sort of try to choose two sort of opposing colors if you can. If not, just experiment to see what works for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hue, and we're going to take that up to around about, uh, around about 50 should do. I want to sort of get into the, the sepia kind of colors. And I'm going to set my saturation to about 50 as well. So you can see we start to bring in that sort of sepia tone. And now I'm going to bring in my shadow color. And this is where I would tend to sort of have a little play about. Now I like going up into the sort of the greens and the purples. Just have a little play about. So let's start off with purple. Let's see what that looks like. And we'll just bump the saturation up on that. And again, we'll set that to about 50. Now don't worry if it looks a little bit too much because what we can do then is we can adjust the balance between the shadows and the highlights so we can if we want to bring more of that yellow tone in and less of the purple so the purple just sits in the shadow areas but we kind of mix that up a little bit more so we can control that so we've got a, a whole range that we can do there if we want to. So what I will tend to do is just use this slider to have a little play about until I find a kind of color that I kind of like. So we could bring it down to the reds if we want to. 
really get really have a good play about with this. Find out what you kind of like. The purples look quite cool actually. And if we go up into the deeper purples. Yeah, that's looking quite cool. I quite like that effect. So, like I say, play about with this experiment to see what kind of colours work for you. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to the effects section and we're going to give this a vignette. So we're going to drag that down, get a vignette around the edges, but then we're going to change it from highlight priority to colour priority. And that just kind of smooths that effect off a little bit better. So I quite like that. So there we go. So you can see we're darkening the edges now quite nicely. So if we before and after... You can see it's quite a natural looking effect. And what I'll also do is add some grain into the image. I don't want to go crazy with this, so we're going to set this to around about 20. And we're going to set the size to around about 40. And we'll set the roughness to about 60. Again, this is a personal preference kind of thing. So if we zoom in, we can see that bit of grain. So let's just before and after. So it adds that little bit of natural grain in there, that film texture to it, which is quite nice. So let's zoom back out. So there we go, that's how easy it is to create this Lomo style effect. So let's just do an AB so we can see what it looked like when we started off to where we are now. So you can see quite a difference, a nice retro kind of Lomo effect where we've got those strong opposing colours, we've got less saturation in there, we've got a nice vignette in there, and overall a pretty cool vintage looking effect. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's an effect you can use in your photography, in your image editing. If you did enjoy this, so please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. And if you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else, please pop those in the comments section below. If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we released on the Kindle store. Eight Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.